So Robbie has gone out for a classy stag do. Better be classy. Um, and they've gone out for dinner and they're playing games and doing whatever men do on a stag do. But anyway, so I'm at the Midland because we're in Manchester, so we figured we may as well stay and he's gonna be probably too tough to drive. So we figured we may as well come to the Midland, stay at the Midland. So I'm here while he's there and then my bridesmaid, Anna, is gonna come and meet me here and we're gonna use the spa facilities and go for dinner. So, um, yeah. So it's quite a win-win really, because obviously I won because I'm getting the uh, spa day kind of thing with my Anna and he's getting a day night out and they're going for steak so I don't know why I'm pacing around the room it's just such a nice room I'm like hmm pacing and I've jumped on the bed a few times maybe I'll do it again <laughs> So, let me put the camera in my tripod. Start um, doing this Q&A. I got some makeup on the bed. I got some lipstick on the bed. Sorry. <sighs> so yes. So Robbie has gone out and he's in Manchester. He's been let loose. I'm gonna get ready in a bit because Anna will be here soon. We're gonna go and use the hot tub and the pool. Hmm. And the Midland left me some really cute stuff. So we've got some like a bottle of Prosecco and some little there. Congratulations! Yeah. Happy Sunday, everybody! So, this is what women do in hotel rooms. Hotel rooms. Oh, no, no. I haven't investigated everything either. You need to investigate everything. I like doing the bed back nice. <gasps> Water. It's in here. Oh, more robes. There's robes in there and then there's robes in here. I need to take. Oh, another. And then there's like a mini bar. There's nothing in it. It's just a fridge. <laughs> and then. Tea! Yes. Fruit and lemon biscuits. Ha <laughs> ha. The note. So dear Georgie, I hope you have a lovely relaxing stay. You deserve it. Love you. And congratulations on getting married. We wish you both a lifetime of happiness. Best wishes the Midland team and Holly. So we've been chatting to Holly. Thank you. Holly oh, like the Midland now. It might be the new Gotham. We might be here more than we're at Gotham. Is it chocolate? I feel like I chocolate. <gasps> yes. Why oh, yeah, are chocolate packets? It's always so hard to get into. Like, we need to get in these. Ooh, oh, fancy. Oh, yeah, look. It kind of looks like in Matilda. In you know, Matilda, when they've got like them chocolates, they've like moved around. Look. Thank you. There's a Midland team, but I know it's a Midland team, but I know it's Holly. Thanks, Holly. Do I wait for Robbie or do I eat? boots off before sitting on the bed I figured I don't have a lot of time alone which is a good thing and I think Q&A's can be quite emotional so I thought this is a good opportunity to uh, do a bit of a ah, bit of a Q&A so pop this up properly right these are ripped jeans, by the way. <laughs> so, I have my Mac, so I have all of the questions. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. I've never done a Q&A before. There have been parts of my videos that I had considered not posting. 
I decided at the beginning of my journey that I would share everything, really emotional bits, things that I'd film to kind of have someone to talk to because I didn't want to tell Robbie how I felt and I didn't want to tell my family how I felt and I didn't want to break in front of them. I tried to live being this positive person and I didn't want to show them how my mind was going so dark through everything. I'm getting upset already, it hasn't even started. <laughs> um, but anyway, so a lot of my videos are talking directly to the camera. I think I found comfort in finding a bit of a friend in my iPhone. I always felt like I could talk to my family and I could talk to Robbie, but I just didn't want to burden them with any more hurtful emotions. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to add to their sadness and add to their pain. So I found you guys <laughs> and I wanted to put out everything that I've been through because when I was first diagnosed and when I was searching for someone who looked like me, who was my age, had long hair, I couldn't really find anyone and I felt so alone and whenever I went into my chemo suite, you know, it's mostly men and women over the age of 50, 60 with cancer, not a 29 year old girl and I, everywhere I turned I feel, felt alone and I found friends in the chemo suite, but again, one of my bestest friends that I made was 75. So it's a lonely place. It really is when you don't know where to turn to or who to talk to and no, you don't feel like anyone understands. But that's what I searched YouTube for. I searched YouTube, I searched the internet, for someone that would understand me that was my age, I found a few girls on Instagram. I found one girl, Julia, who I've spoken about before, and she helped me immensely. Like on my darkest days, she helped me. I also made some friends who unfortunately passed away and that really sent me spiraling. Um, I can't seem to fill the hole that they've left in my heart. Like I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how difficult it is when you meet someone in this process and it's so focused on death and then when they do go it's still a shock it's still um, it's still heartbreaking because for a minute you forget you just have a friend and you forget how you met you forget what you were going through together. You know, you sit in the chemo chair with chemotherapy going into your hand or port or pick line. And sometimes for a minute, you just forget why you're there and you just have a friend and, and then they're not there anymore. Anyway, oh my goodness. So, Anyway, so I wanted to post everything because I wanted to give Georgie, who was looking for all the answers, I want to give that Georgie the answers. And if there is anyone like me that needs the answers, I hope my videos give you them. Because I was desperate to know what IVF looked like. I was desperate to know what the radiation dye looked like, why my boob went blue, how blue was it? Surgery radiotherapy, chemotherapy, will I keep my hair with the cold cap? All these questions I wanted to answer for you, past Georgie. And future women, I hope these videos really help you because watching them back, it hurts so much to watch them back. And I think that's why I found it hard to edit them all. But I'm, Hopefully at the end of editing all of my videos about cancer and in the future, I'm hoping to post happier things. So this channel will be more about life after. Anyway, to the Q&A. Oh, goodness me. I hope these questions aren't too much. <laughs> okay. Is there a booking form to book you as a boobette? Oh, so yes. 
there is. You can actually go onto the Copperfield website because I am now a boobette for anyone who didn't know. So a boobette is someone who's had an experience with breast cancer, either a friend or family member, someone that has actually directly been through it. And we are here to educate and to encourage you to check yourself. Notice I always go to the boob I actually had it in. Had, like that word, had. Okay, so is there a booking form to book you as a boobette? Yes, there is. You can go onto the Copperfield website and you can book a boobette there. Um, I'm not sure if you can be specific or and book me as a boobette, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, the booking form is on there and then you can come to wherever, whenever. Oh, that was a nice one. I like that one. Okay, right now one second because someone's texting me. Okay, my friend's meeting me here, so she was just messaging me. Right, okay, so um, the next one. Are those booby cakes for sale? I'm liking these questions. Yes, so my cousin and bridesmaid, who was there for me all day, every day, when I was going through treatment, we didn't really speak a huge amount before, but my God, has she been there for me through my treatment. I couldn't thank her enough. But anyway, she makes booby cakes and they are for sale at Little Duck Cupcakes on Instagram. So go and check them out. And uh, I'm sure she can post them if you need to or deliver them or whatever, but they're amazing. These questions are great. Which boob did you have it in? This one, my left. I had it literally there. I think that answers that really. Um, okay, you're beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I like these. I thought they were gonna be really difficult. <laughs> Not a question, but just to say that I think you're so amazing and making such a difference. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. How did you keep your hair? Okay, that's a great question. So I, I think I've kept about, I keep saying 60% of my hair. It has come back quite quickly actually. So I'm about, I'm just over a year post chemo, a year since I finished chemo. And that's my regrowth there. So all that in a year, like wow. And all of this, so this is my hair. So it is thin, but it does look thick at the top, I think because I've got this fringe now. Um, but I kept my hair using the Paxman cold cap. So the cold cap basically freezes your scalp and it, my goodness, it's cold. It freezes your scalp so then the chemotherapy doesn't touch the cells on your head. So it helps your hair not fall out. There is a big science to it and I will do a separate video on the Paxman cold cap and how I kept my hair and everything because it is quite a intense subject. But yeah, I used a cold cap. And I did lose my hair. I did lose quite a lot of my hair. Um, I, it didn't come out in clumps. It kind of more kind of came out like this, which I did video as well. But yeah. How do I know if it's cancer? The short answer is you don't. You don't know if it's cancer. I didn't know. I never in a million years thought it would be cancer. But 29, cancer? That's something older people get. No, you don't know. If you feel anything, it's important to get it checked. Extremely important to get it checked. It's also important to know your normal. So that's another thing with being a boobet that we try and encourage people. So knowing your normal is the most important thing that you can do. If you, once a month, not every week, not every day, once a month, if you just feel your chest, just while you're laying down in the shower, just give it a feel in the right places, like this, underneath the bust, to the side, under the armpit, collarbones, above and below. Just give it a feel and get to know your normal. What feels normal? And then that way, if something is there, you'll know that's not normal. And then you get it checked. And it's not about looking for cancer. It's just about knowing what is normal for you. But how do I know if it's cancer? You really don't because my cancer felt like a gummy bear. It was squishy, it moved. Every person told me they didn't think that it would be cancer until I had a biopsy and it came back and it was. It was completely unexpected. So knowing your normal is the most important thing.
okay. Not a question, but just wanted to say I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Everything good. I like that one. I like that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, everything's good. I think if you'd have asked me that a few months ago, I would have been in bits and said no, and it'd have been a whole negative thing. But yeah, everything's good. I'm, um, I've been discharged from counselling. I'm starting to see a life after cancer. My whole world isn't consumed by cancer. I'm still having my scans, mammograms, you know, MRIs. I'm still taking the tamoxifen. But yes, thank you. Everything's good. Oh, this is, this is quite nice. You're my biggest inspiration. You guys are so nice. Like, you're such a lovely group of people. Thank you so much. Do you have any secrets to stay positive during tough times? I think it's important to surround yourself with positive people, to have a, a good unit around you. I feel like a lot of my smiles through treatment were maybe a little bit fake. I think I tried to be so positive that I created an animated character that wasn't me. My counsellor said that I was like Mickey Mouse, that in behind closed doors I was black and white, but in front of people I was coloured and animated. And that's exactly how I felt. But secrets to staying positive. A good cup of tea will always make a British person positive. <laughs> I don't think there are any secrets, I think it's just it's a really rocky road and you'll have good days and bad days but don't put pressure on yourself to be positive because you need to allow yourself to feel feel the negative feel the pain feel everything give yourself a break basically but no no secrets just sometimes a fake smile but i think it's more of a real one now Random, would you consider pizza, would you consider pizza with, with or no pineapple? Would you consider pizza with or no pineapple? Oh, oh yeah, with, yeah. I, I think after, since I was diagnosed, I've kind of gone a little bit vegetarian. I don't enjoy meat anymore. So I have been having pineapple on my pizza. And when we make our own pizza, because my mum makes the dough and it's amazing, we make our own. Uh, I do have rocket on it, pineapple on it. Um, I still have cheese and everything, so I'm not quite vegan. But, uh, and obviously milk and tea. I don't think that'll ever be able to happen. But yeah, definitely. Pineapple pizza. Ah, ah. I'm so hyped to be included in your YouTube. I don't know what to ask. Well, well, what did you ask? Was the Herceptin injection painful? So I have videoed my Herceptin injections, much like everything else, and the needle is quite small. The needle isn't necessarily painful, but the injection is. So as it's going in, it feels like a bee sting or someone putting a cigarette out on your leg. Um, and that lasts like a good five, 10 minutes because they have to put it in so slowly. They have to inject it so slowly. Um, so yeah, it is painful. My last few weren't that painful, which is quite strange. Um, I don't know if it's because I'd got used to it, I don't know. I don't think so, I think it was just different, but it goes into the top of your thigh, uh, or sides, into the muscle. Um, it was, it was, it stang. It wasn't unbearable, but it wasn't comfortable. Why didn't you have a port? No pain. Um, I can't comment on the no pain, because obviously I didn't have one. But I was never offered a port until my fifth or sixth chemo. And that really upset me. My veins started to get harder and harder to find in my hand. And then my chemo nurses said that they thought they should consider me having a port because I had 12 chemotherapy infusions. It upset me because I felt like I was, I was getting there. You know, I was, I was almost there, I'm getting to halfway, and 
I just really wanted to continue in, in hand and arm. Um, I didn't actually really have much choice in it. I was given the leaflets and stuff and said that it was being considered, but one of my nurses, well, two of them luckily always seemed to find a vein eventually. So I was never, I never had the port, which I'm quite glad of. I mean, I don't have the port scar, you know, I didn't have to go through that the surgery of having the port. It was hard to have it every week because I can only have chemotherapy or injections or anything in the one. Okay, so my phone ran out of storage, basically. So anyway, I have a lymphedema risk in this arm. That's why everything, all my infusions I have to have in, in my right arm. So that includes having the blood pressure machine, everything has to go on this arm. So it made it quite hard weekly to find a vein because we can only use this, this one. And obviously chemotherapy can affect your veins. And I feel like with me, it definitely, they've hidden. They've definitely decided to hide. But um, yeah, so I didn't have a port because they felt like my veins were healthy and they could see them. And then during chemotherapy, they got less and less. But yeah, and that's here. I'm so ready to So I've currently got my phone in like a Christmas tree plant and I'm in the lobby of the Midland. So I was doing my Q&A but um, Anna turned up on my bridesmaids and we went to use the facilities so like the spa and the jacuzzi which was lovely but obviously I didn't completely finish my Q&A. So I have got a few more questions that I will get done and I will post but I will set a day aside and do like a longer Q&A so I'll pop that on my Instagram so you can ask any questions because I've had her had... Ah, it seems the tree branch did not want to hold. My first Q&A has been quite, uh, quite eventful. <laughs> Bye!